In my lab, we can produce any conceivable shape uh, like these using DNA nanotechnology. And uh, these are big models, but here they are. You can't see them because they're too small to see with your own eyes. And uh, this technology can revolutionize the way we understand and uh, manipulate biology. To build really small entities, and we're talking nanoscale here, is quite a challenge. But this is something that Björn Hergbär and the researchers at Karolinska Institute have become expert at. And the way to achieve this is through folding DNA molecules. The technique is called DNA origami. DNA is a fantastic material to build something out of, uh, of self-assembly because it's very predictable how DNA attaches to another DNA molecule. A always attaches to T and C always attaches to G. So you can build up these sequences of letters and you know exactly what, it will, what partner it will bind to in solution. It's very easy to produce synthetic DNA with the exact sequence that you want and it's very predictable how they will form shapes in the test tube. So that is why we like to use DNA. It's very programmable and very predictable. So in DNA origami, we take one long single-stranded molecule and then we mix that with a number of short DNA uh, strands. And then we can design these ones exactly how we want. We call them staples because they staple this long molecule with these design DNA molecules, scientists can design whatever structures they want. To simplify the process even further, they've now succeeded in developing an algorithm to help them make even more complex structures. We have been drawing lots of different shapes in a 3D software, and then our algorithm calculates the sequences for the DNA design, and then we can fold them at the nanoscale. After designing the sequences for the origami structure, we order all the DNA strands from a DNA synthesizing company, and they send us the, the DNA in these types of plates. Each well has a specific DNA sample. And what we do is that we take all of these and pipette them together into a pool, and then we mix uh, all these short staple oligonucleotides with a long single-stranded scaffold. The scientists are able to attach other types of molecules to the DNA structures. Then they analyze the impact of different distances between the molecules. It's been hypothesized for a long time that our cells communicate with each other through receptors that detect not only which molecules neighboring cells have, but also at what distances and in what patterns they are placed. For example, in breast cancer, we know that there is a type of receptor that is very sensitive to the distances between the different receptors. And in those type of cancer cells, these receptors are much more abundant than in normal cells. So what we could do, or what we hope to do, is to be able to learn more about this clustering language, and then using that type of language, be able to maybe fool the cancer cells into believing that they should commit suicide, for example. My dream would be to design something as ingenious as nature, be able to fabricate something that is of the same complexity and uh, impact as some of the molecular machines that we can find in nature. For example, the, the DNA replication machinery that copies the DNA in our bodies over generations, the antenna system that provides energy to the photosynthesis, uh, making something as amazing like that would be a real dream come true.